Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord uh, for another day's journey. The scripture says this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad that you're all tuning in uh, for our Bible study on today. I'm excited about what God has been doing in our lives. I'm excited about uh, just being able to teach, preach, and uh, for you to be able to tune in and to hear and listen to what thus saith the Lord. As we uh, begin to uh, move into our Bible study for this week, we want to go before the Lord in prayer. Obviously, we want to uh, pray for uh, men and women and children everywhere, as I often say, that we let us pray for men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord will save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. It's good uh, to pray. The Bible says men should always pray and not to faint. And uh, prayer is essential to our lives and our walk with the Lord. Uh, different types and different styles of prayer. But uh, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So when you are laboring before the Lord as Jacob was uh, prevailed, uh, with the Lord. That's how we want to be in our prayers and our prayer life. We want to prevail with the Lord on our side. And we don't want to ask amiss, uh, so we want to pray with the right motives. So as we begin to pray, let us remember uh, the bereaved families, the Chapman family, that the Lord will send forth their comfort. And let us also remember uh, the whole world. Uh, God is a God of universe in multiple worlds so let us pray uh, that the Lord will remember us uh, that he would uh, comfort us and strengthen us and give us all that we need to survive and uh, surely he has already done that we're already asking we want to ask the Lord to manifest what he's already done let us pray gracious father in the name of Jesus we certainly thank you and praise you for this opportunity to stand before you to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. As we seek your face, Lord, bless us to turn from every wicked way to call upon your holy name. And Lord, let us forgive all those that have trespassed against us uh, so that you might forgive us of our trespasses. We ask you, O Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that you blood wash us and cleanse us and purge us from all unrighteousness, every word, thought, deed, and every secret thought. And Lord, we pray so that you might manifest your glory, manifest your power, manifest your will within us that we may manifest it upon this earth. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on today, grant wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We ask you, Lord, that you help us to live out uh, the true meaning of what you have desired for us in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says that you know our thoughts, uh, that, that you know our deeds and our actions and our ways. And we ask you, Lord, that you give us the strength, give us the guidance, and bless us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for your purpose. We pray for your plan to be done in our lives. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. We bind every evil spirit, every demonic power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, today, we want to uh, literally continue on uh, in our uh, in St. Matthew chapter number six. And as we're teaching this particular series uh, of kingdom salvation, and this is part three of kingdom salvation. And as we uh, begin to dwell into Matthew chapter number six, uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is very vital and necessary to each of us uh, as we are dwelling and being kingdom-minded. Uh, the scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, <laughs> verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Uh, Jesus taught that we ought to prioritize the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. That ought to be prioritized in our lives. And uh, in the book of um, uh, 
2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse 16, it says uh, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, uh, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, meaning mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And um, certainly that's the purpose of the word of God, that we may be thoroughly furnished uh, unto all good works. And the scriptures are inspired by God uh, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So let us take heed to the word. The scripture says, how shall a man cleanse his way? And it, then it gives you the answer by taking heed thereto according to God's word or thy word. And the word of God is, is quick and it's powerful. <laughs> Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. So Jesus taught uh, in the book of St. Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, uh, uh, of righteousness, of the what should take place in his kingdom, how to live uh, by kingdom principles or kingdom salvation. And in Matthew chapter number six, uh, he talks about eight key areas. There are eight key areas in Matthew chapter number six that he's concerned about. And uh, the first four areas deal with areas of worship. Jesus is, is concerned about our worship. And the uh, last four areas deal with literally how we ought to live and how we ought to conduct ourselves and what our state of mind should be. Uh, the first uh, four areas that are key uh, deal with giving, uh, deal with prayer and fasting, and also our deeds. The, the last four areas deal with uh, one's light, money, worry, and priority, what we ought to prioritize. So in looking at um, these particular scriptures and these particular areas, the reason why I've outlined them is because uh, I'm going to go over them pretty quickly. Uh, I hope that you take the time. Uh, to study Matthew 5, 6, and 7 uh, if you're kingdom-minded, if, kingdom, if you're about kingdom salvation and about pleasing your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it deals with how to conduct yourself, how to live in this present world. Um, as we begin to, to, to look at this, uh, the first four areas uh, deal with uh, areas of worship, of areas of worship. So we see here, let's dive right in. Uh, Matthew chapter number six and uh, verse uh, number one. And I also want to say uh, before I get into this is that uh, uh, Matthew five, six, and seven, it literally instructs uh, the child of God, those that are submitted to God, those that um, literally call him Lord. Um, they instruct us on how to handle particular situations. And I can honestly say that since I've been uh, studying this and teaching this, uh, that, that areas or, or situations have come up uh, in normal day life or normal day living, wherein I was reminded of Matthew chapter number five and and I gave advice on how to handle a particular situation and I was uh, I'm grateful to the Lord and I'm grateful for his word I see why the scripture says and it tells us that we ought to meditate in the word of God day and night and not let it depart from our mouth uh, what that simply means is is that we should always be constantly uh, uh, searching our hearts and meditating and thinking according to the scriptures. And uh, when we give advice, 
It literally means when it says, don't let it depart from your mouth, it, it, it means the opposite. It means to uh, always speak of the word of God. Always uh, put your thoughts, uh, put your speech connected to God's word. Um, I know some people say that may say, well, pastor, you, you, you're going overboard now. Now, uh, uh, if you're always thinking according to the scriptures, then how can you be uh, a, a friendly person? How can you uh, enjoy life? Uh, the scriptures in it, it tells you how to enjoy life. It tells you how to uh, live and to conduct yourselves so that your life can be prosperous. If you don't guard your heart, now see, I'm getting off subject here, but if you don't guard your heart, uh, if you don't uh, guard your heart, and then the enemy can slip things into your mind that you will manifest if you're not careful. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. And if you use the word of God as a weapon of warfare, and you will be able to cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So we see here then in Matthew chapter number six, oh glory, thank you Lord, and in the areas of worship, these are uh, four areas of worship that Jesus is concerned about. Uh, first says, take heed uh, that ye do your alms or your giving uh, before men. Take heed that ye do not your alms or your giving before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have your reward for your heavenly, uh, of your heavenly Father, which is in heaven. He says, verse number two, uh, therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when ye do your alms, let not the, thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thy alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. That's the first thing that Jesus is talking about. He's talking about giving, uh, especially giving to the poor. He says, when you give to the poor or give to anybody, do it in secret. Uh, these first uh, four or these first four uh, areas of, of worship, uh, giving is an area of worship. And he wants you to give in secret. Uh, they, they were giving uh, to be seen of men. Uh, they were giving with the wrong motive, giving with the wrong heart to be seen of others, uh, drawing attention to themselves and not unto God to receive praises of men. When you, when you operate uh, that way, uh, the Bible says you shall have your reward. But the Lord wants you to give, when you give, to give in secret. Don't let your left hand or your right hand know uh, what's going on. In other words, do it in a simplistic way, a simple way uh, that others may uh, don't, don't know so that your heavenly Father can reward you uh, openly. Do it in secret so that God can reward you openly. Do it with the right motive. Do it out of love. Uh, he's not referring to giving an offering in the church. Uh, he's referring to doing good deeds, uh, showing kindness, showing love, giving of alms, all right? So uh, uh, study up on that. Uh, there's a lot more that I would say uh, about that, but time would not permit us. Um, so number five, verse number five, Matthew chapter number five, it says, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites. Now hypocrite is a pretender. It's an actor. Don't, don't, don't try to serve God uh, as a hypocrite or an actor. 
It's either real or nothing. Be whole or nothing. Amen. So he says here, and when thou prayest, be don't, don't be like the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. See, there's another connection. Uh, 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 giving to be seen, uh, praying to be seen. Uh, the Lord has nothing against uh, uh, public prayer. That's not the motive. The motive uh, of what Jesus is talking about is for people to be seen of men, to be show-offs, to do it so that people can look at them who's praying in public to say, oh, they're so religious. Oh, they're, they pray so eloquently. Um, that's not the purpose of, of public prayer. Public prayer is to be used as a means to, to, to invoke God's kingdom upon the earth. And when an individual is doing it uh, as a hypocrite to be a show off, they're going to have their reward of men or women. Uh, notice, notice when I, when, I, when I was studying this particular chapter, uh, I noticed this, this nugget that kind of stuck out to me. It said, and when thou prayest, uh, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. He says, truly, they shall uh, uh, say unto you, they have their reward. But verse number six, but when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. So Jesus is telling you, when you pray, uh, he's not against public prayer. He's saying, when you're earnestly praying, pray in secret, pray in secret, uh, so that your heavenly Father, uh, who seeth thee in secret, he will reward thee openly. That's what he says. Notice what he says, verse number six. But when thou prayest, enter it into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall we do what? Reward thee openly. You need to underline that in your Bible. That uh, when you pray unto God in this fashion, in secret, he will reward you openly. In other words, when you pray, uh, there's a blessing that is connected to it. When you pray and seek God, God will reward you. God will bless you. That should be a motivation to all of us to pray. That should be a motivation to all of us to, to, to receive the blessings of God. When we do things God's way and don't ask amiss, that to consume what we're asking for upon our own lust. But when we have the right motive, when we pray the right prayer, pray in secret unto your God, hallelujah, and your God will turn around and reward you openly. Your God will reward you. I can't stress that enough. If you, whatever you need, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Hallelujah. When you go after the things that uh, 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 God has laid upon your heart, whatever you need, you can go to God in prayer and God will reward you. In the book of Hebrews, it tells you in Hebrews chapter number 11 that God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. And that word diligent means carefully, without let up systematically, continuously, persistently. Uh, when you go to God and come boldly to his throne of grace, you can obtain that mercy and find that grace that you need in your time of need. Um, I can't stress that enough. And when the Lord opened that up to me, uh, he wanted me to share that with you today, that what if you desire a reward. If you desire a blessing, you don't have to steal it. You don't have to lie about it. 
All you need to do is go to God in prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. We ought to clap our hands and give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. Go to God in prayer. Notice that verse 6. He says, but when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, uh, pray to thy Father which seeth in secret. Uh, when you pray to your Father in secret, thy heavenly Father uh, seeth thee in secret, shall reward thee openly. Thank you, Lord. He will reward you openly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So no, now this verse number seven. For when ye pray, he's still talking about prayer, which is an act of worship. When you pray, use not vain reputation as the heathen or the Gentiles do. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to uh, be so religious in your prayers that you're repeating the same thing over and over and over again uh, so, that, so that you can be heard of God. So that, so that people will uh, see that you're a student of, of the word of God. No, uh, uh, a simple prayer will do. Thank you, Lord. God knows. He knows what you need even before you ask him. Uh, so all you need to do is ask. Uh, all you need to do is seek. All you need to do is knock. Uh, and the door shall be open. Notice, he says, but when you pray, don't use vain repetition as, as, and that vain means empty. Empty repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard uh, for their much speaking. It's not about uh, 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 all the eloquent words that you can put together uh, to impress God. This is not a, uh, 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 an time um, in prayer. It's not a time for you to impress God. Prayer is a petition. You're petitioning God. You want God to move on your behalf. And the scripture says, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, he will in no wise despise. When you, when you cry out to God with sincerity, with honesty, God will hear your prayer. Look at Hannah. Hannah was seeking for a male child. And Hannah came to the altar in secret and let her petition be made known unto God, and God heard her cry. <laughs> God heard her. Thank you, Lord. God heard her cry. Thank you, Lord. And there, Jesus, he taught a parable. He said that two men came to the altar. One was a Pharisee and one was a sinner. And he said that the Pharisee came to the altar and, and said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like this sinner. See, he, he didn't have the wrong motive, had the wrong desire. And then the sinner said, Lord, forgive me because I am a sinner. And then Jesus says, which one went down justified? And the answer was the one that smote his breast and was honest with God and said, Lord, forgive me for I am a sinner. That's all God wants. Uh, he wants your true motive. He don't want a great, God himself has a great vocabulary. He don't want to hear your vocabulary. Uh, he wants to hear the sincerity and the honesty of your heart. Hallelujah, my God. So, uh, uh, so when you pray and when you begin to seek God, seek him in secret, he'll reward you openly and you don't use vain repetition so that you can be heard of men. All right, let us move on. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, verse number eight. Verse number eight, Matthew chapter six and verse number eight. And he says, be not therefore like them, uh, like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. He knows what you need before you ask. So you don't have to go into a long tirade about your whole laundry list. Thank you, Lord. Just make your request known unto God and believe God and move on. Thank you, Lord. Uh, notice verse number nine. He says, uh, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Now Jesus here is giving a, a, an example 
of the ingredients of your prayer. When you are praying, you need to have this or have these ingredients in your prayer when you seek after God. Now, notice uh, here that Jesus, what we call the Lord's Prayer, thank you, Lord, but it's actually a model prayer. I believe this is only, this is Pastor Quinn. I, I believe that the Lord's Prayer is in St. John 14, 15, 16, and 17 when he was about to go uh, and give himself as an offering for you and I. But uh, uh, people have called uh, this the Lord's Prayer. And I don't have a problem with it. I'll just uh, 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 explain why I, what I consider the Lord's Prayer. That's just me. All right. Now, we see here, um, uh, verse number nine. He says, after this manner, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I just want to bring some things to your attention as we move on. I know I'm kind of going kind of quickly here, but I want to cover this whole chapter. Uh, in this Lord's Prayer, Jesus is praying uh, and giving us some ingredients that we should incorporate in our prayers. Uh, the first one is we ought to honor God. We ought to honor God and his son, Jesus Christ. We ought to desire uh, the kingdom. We ought to desire the kingdom. We ought to desire God's will. We ought to uh, seek uh, for forgiveness uh, from God and we also have to acknowledge forgiveness of others. If people have done you wrong, you have to forgive them uh, so that your heavenly Father can forgive you. And, and you have to, in your prayer, you should be asking for God's safety and for God's protection and that, that you don't be led into temptation. Uh, you ought to uh, be seeking God for those things. Those elements should be connected with your prayer. Uh, let me say it again. Uh, honoring and reverencing God should be a part of it. Your desire for God's kingdom, for God's will, forgiveness, uh, uh, that, that God will forgive others and that God will forgive you and for his protection, uh, for his safety, and, and for the glory of God to be made manifest. Now, I want to say this. When we're looking at that particular Lord's Prayer, he tells us, Thy kingdom come, that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what I want to say about that is, what Jesus is, is really simply saying is, Lord, help us, when he says, our Father who art in heaven. He's saying, Lord, help us to honor your name. Uh, help us. When he says, our Father who art in heaven, we have to come to a, a, a place where we, can, we should be honoring the name of the Lord. Now, I don't have time to go into great detail about why we should honor the name of the Lord, but the Bible tells us that a great name is, should be uh, 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 sought after than anything else. God stands behind his name. Uh, when, when, when we invoke the name of the Lord, we're invoking his power. We're invoking his glory. We're invoking his honor. <laughs> thank you, Lord. And when we use that name, thank you, Lord. The Bible tells us 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and everything in heaven and in earth, hallelujah, is going to be submissive to that name. Hallelujah. There's, the devils tremble at that name. Ah, so that there's power, deliverance, and glory in the name. So we have to be able to honor that name. We have to put it in our hearts how great and mighty that name is. God doesn't even want you to swear by his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, let your yea be yea or your nay be nay. Anything else cometh of evil. Don't swear by my name because, don't swear by it because the uh, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. My God, let me, let me calm myself down, bring myself back. But, but there's power in the name. So we have to be able to honor that name. Now notice what he said. Uh, 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 uh. What Jesus is saying, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Notice, then he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what he's saying there is, Lord, set up your kingdom upon this earth so we will obey you as 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 you are obeyed in heaven. Now let me say that again so that you can catch it. Uh, we ought to be praying that Lord establish your kingdom upon this earth so that we can obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Let me say that again because that's very powerful and that's necessary for your prayer. Father, establish your kingdom upon this earth uh, so that we might obey you uh, as you are obeyed in heaven. God is obeyed in heaven. The Bible tells us there's 24 elders that are up there in heaven before the throne of God just bowing down on a daily basis saying that he's holy. The angels are subject to God. And those that angels that were not subject to God, Michael kicked them out. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. So everything in heaven is subject to God. And God wants us in earth to be subject to him through the manifestation of his kingdom. And if you know and study anything about kingdom, it means where a king rules or a king's dominion. And, and Jesus, uh, he's going to be king of kings and lord of lords. So when we uh, say that we're a part of his kingdom, first of all, we are uh, looked on as royalty, as kings and priests, hallelujah, that are subject to Jesus who is our king and priest. Thank you, Lord. My God, I hope I didn't lose you. I hope you stay with me. But, but we ought to be praying. We ought to be seeking uh, uh, to be righteous unto God and to live that kind of lifestyle. All right? Now, let me move on. Thank you, Lord. Notice. Ah, glory be to God. Notice. Uh, we ought to be praying. Uh, verse number 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We should be praying, Lord, give us what we need for today. Uh, we should be seeking God for what we need for today. Because later on, Jesus is going to tell us, tomorrow will take care of itself. But you need, if you can't survive today, uh, there's, there's no need to talk about tomorrow. So we need to ask God, God, supply me what I need for today. When God fed the children in the wilderness, he gave them manna for that day. Uh, except it was uh, 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 during the Sabbath, they were allowed to collect it for two days. But other than that, God fed them, hallelujah, on a daily basis. Why? Because he wants us to be able to depend on him. 
He's trying to get us to depend and trust in him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to depend on God on a daily basis. You've got to be able to live according to the word of God. Lord, supply my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, and he'll do it on a daily basis. My God. So we see here then, uh, verse number 12, he says, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's part, that should be part and partial of your prayer is forgiveness. Forgiveness is key. Thank you, Lord. Uh, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Notice, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That should be a part of your daily prayer. Lord, protect us from danger. Protect us from evil, seen and unseen. Hallelujah. And Lord, help me to obey you so that, so that, so that uh, uh, the devil don't tempt me with evil. Uh, hallelujah. Now, let's move on. He says here, um, verse uh, 15, he says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you of your trespasses. Jesus, Jesus he's, he's bringing that out. Uh, people of God, we can't harbor grudges. We can't harbor ill feelings and ill will because that will get in the way of your service. Uh, you can't have... You are, we are commanded to love. And you can't love with hatred in your heart uh, for your fellow being and for your fellow man that is created in the image and the likeness of God. You can't hate people, hallelujah, and love them and do them good at the same time. So, so God, that's why the Bible says when people wrong you, not that I want God to get people, but when people wrong you, God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, thus saith the Lord. And that's why Jesus said, when, when you are persecuted uh, uh, for righteousness sake, uh, he tells you what to do. Uh, he said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So persecuted they the prophets that were before you. So, so uh, in other words, don't worry about getting people back. You worry about loving them to the fullest. If they, if they do you wrong, feed them. If they hurt you, forgive them. Uh, I, was, uh, I got one preacher, I got one tape. It's back in my archives. Uh, uh, Bishop Nehemiah Smith out of uh, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, he taught, uh, he was preaching a sermon. He said, when people do me wrong, he, said, I, he says, ouch, and he starts forgiving them immediately. That's what he said. He said, when people do them him wrong and he feel it, he starts forgiving them immediately. And that's what you've got to do. That kind of old shot. You've got to forgive people, release them, so that you don't harbor all of that uh, uh, negativity. Now we can go into a whole Bible study about what that negativity causes you. Causes you ulcers, causes you anxiety, causes you heart problems, causes you indigestion, <laughs> causes you racing thoughts, can't sleep at night. Why? Because you so consumed about what so-and-so has done to you. Release them, forgive them, cast all your cares upon the Lord. You may say, Pastor, why are you going over this? It's because uh, uh, generally people are not going to like you because you're holding up the bloodstained banner and you're convicting their lives. They're going to uh, uh, do you wrong just to get at you. Not everybody is for a righteous person. And, and you've got to have thick skin and realize that when you stand up for truth, when you stand up for righteousness, uh, people are not going, they're not going to include you. They're probably going to exclude you. Uh, notice what Jesus said. Notice what the Bible says. Jesus was despised. 
He was rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Why was he despised? He's the Savior. He came to save their lives. But the scripture says that he convicted them because he was the light and people love darkness more than they love light. That's reality. But you can't hold grudges. You got to love them because the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, hallelujah. All right, let me move on. My God. Hey, glory. Uh, verse, verse number 13. And he says, uh, I'm sorry, let me move down. I should hold on my, uh, be holding on to my, my points. The next act of, of worship, my God, we got to move on quickly. My next act of worship, uh, we first dealt with uh, giving and we dealt with prayer. The next act of worship is fasting. Notice, and he says, uh, moreover, verse 16, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites. Don't be a pretender. Don't be a faker. <laughs> he says, uh, of a sad countenance, and they, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to fast unto men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thy head, wash thy face, uh, that they, thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in heaven in secret. For thy Father which seeth uh, in secret shall reward thee openly. So that's another one. Uh, he doesn't want you to give. Uh, he wants you to give secretly. He wants you to pray secretly. And he wants you to fast secretly. And if you do it the way God has said, you'll receive a reward. God will bless you. God will help you. And here, uh, we want to show that fasting is necessary. Uh, a lot of people don't uh, subscribe to fasting and prayer and giving the way God says. But if you want to be blessed in the kingdom, <laughs> if you truly want your efforts and your labor to not to be in vain, then you have to follow Jesus' prescribed way. And Jesus' prescribed way is the way of righteousness. It's righteousness deals with a word that comes from right behavior or wise behavior. And God, he, he, he tells us what is right and how to abide and, and operate in kingdom principles. Uh, notice what we said, when you pray, it's progressive. When you pray, he wants you to pray, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So what that is actually saying is, you are praying that kingdom principles will be obeyed in, he in earth as they are in heaven. These, what I'm giving you today, are kingdom principles which ought to be obeyed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you can reap the result. So you can receive the blessing. Hallelujah, my God. Oh, my God. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking the church is full. And I'm, and I'm listening to amens. And I'm listening to glory to God. I'm listening to uh, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because this is what I'm giving you on today. If you follow it and apply it to your life, you shall receive the reward. You shall receive the blessing. You'll be like that tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Hallelujah. That whatsoever you do, because you're operating in kingdom principle, it shall prosper. Hallelujah. So we see here. Let us move on. All right. So we talked then about the four areas of, of worship, giving, fasting, 
and uh, 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 prayer. Now we want to enter into the fourth area. Notice what he says. Uh, verse uh, 16. Now verse 19. It says, lay up, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. Now, what Jesus is saying here is uh, your deeds, your acts uh, in the kingdom, uh, your treasures in heaven. We, the Bible tells us to set our affections on things above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of Father. Uh, you, if you love me, he said, you'll keep my commandments. So, so love is the motivator uh, for your deeds and for your actions. And your deeds and your actions or your lifestyle is a form of worship. It's the highest form of worship that you can give God. Uh, notice what he says. What shall I render unto the Lord? <laughs> hey! Thank you, Lord. He said, I will drink of the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And that drinking is an act of worship. Hallelujah. And the highest order that you can contribute to God as an act of worship is your lifestyle. Hallelujah. In other words, he said, he said, be not, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, he says, be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when Jesus is saying, talking about your treasures, he's talking about your deeds and your actions. Don't look uh, uh, trying to establish uh, good works upon this earth. Uh, you want to establish good works in heaven. Now I'm not talking about uh, works cause you to have salvation. Uh, don't, don't miss and screw me. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. The uh, 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 Bible says you're saved by grace and that through faith. But what Jesus is talking about is what uh, Paul tried to bring out in his scriptures. Uh, faith without works is dead. So, so he's saying that be more focused on those things that are eternal. <laughs> Not temporal. Don't try to labor for the, the things that are upon this earth, trying to get you a car, trying to get you a house, amen? Uh, trying to get you clothes and trying to get accumulate a lot of money. Thank you, Lord, but no, use your temple uh, and submit it to God so that your deeds and your actions may accumulate the things that are in heaven. Hallelujah. So that's what Jesus is talking about. He says, your actions that uh, uh, deeds upon this earth, uh, uh, let them benefit you in heaven. Uh, do good works. Do good deeds that are according to the scriptures that will benefit you in heaven. Uh, Jesus said, he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, uh, uh, I may receive you. He said, my father's house are many mansions. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. So how do you perform and store up good treasures in heaven? You do good deeds. You do great exploits. You do good works uh, while resisting the evil. Uh, uh, you answer the call of duty. 
Thank you, Lord. You submit yourself to authority and leadership. Submit yourself to the pastor. Submit to yourself to those that have the rule over you. Submit yourself to committee leaders and those that are in position. Submit yourself to ushers. Hallelujah. My God, uh, give uh, to every good cause. That's how you establish and store treasure up in heaven. Pray. Thank you, Lord. Uh, when Cornelius was praying for salvation, he was a Gentile. The Bible says that God has heard his prayers because they were stored up in heaven. Hallelujah. My God, those are the good works. Those are the treasures. Uh, uh, spiritual things uh, 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 cause you to reap spiritually over and over and over and over and over again. Hallelujah. When you give to the cause of God uh, and God blesses you, he doesn't necessarily just, sometimes he'll bless you monetarily, but uh, he'll bless you in other means, in other ways, with good health, good strength. Hallelujah. He'll bless your children. <laughs> he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. My God, Hallelujah. we got to move on. But, but, but this could go on and on and on. You've got to focus more on, on what's eternal. That kind of old shot. You've got to focus on, not on things of this earth, but you've got to focus on what matters to God. Hallelujah. And give to God what belongs to God. Hey, hallelujah. If you want to be great and mighty in God's kingdom, then focus on what God calls right. Focus on what God calls mighty. Focus on what God calls strong. And, and focus on what God calls proper, prosperous. Don't focus on uh, uh, getting rid of. My God, let me just talk to you just for a moment. Hey, we've got to get rid of of the mentality of the world. And, and that's not easy to do because before we come to Christ, if you, if you uh, uh, have spent any time in the world, you've uh, come to worldly principles, worldly ways, and, and, and the ways of God are opposite from the ways of the world. So you have to retrain your mind you have to recalibrate uh, your thoughts so that your mind and your thoughts can uh, 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 be as uh, the Bible says. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. And you've got to think new. You've got to think right. Hallelujah. You've got to... Uh, get rid of the old man in the old way of thinking and put on Christ. Hey, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. We, that's the way we've got to be, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. Now, let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, verse, uh, let's go to verse uh, 22. Be in verse 22. He says, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, uh, thine eye be single, thy whole body is full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the, the, the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness. Now, what Jesus is talking about here is uh, the light. Uh, the light of the body, he says, is the eye. And what he's saying here is, is that uh, you've got to be careful about what you focus on, what you are allowing to entertain your mind or what you see. Uh, if uh, I spend all day looking at pornography, then my, that's going to get into my spirit. That's going to get into my soul and I will become that evil because I'm looking at it. I'm seeing it and it's manifesting. And he's saying that 
how great is that darkness if, if that's all that you're focusing in on. Uh, if you're only focusing in on evil, if you're only focusing in on uh, that which is wrong and that which is dirty, then your, your mind will become corrupt. Your, your thoughts will become corrupt. And the light that you have will be uh, put under the bushel uh, that, that, that no man can see the light of Jesus. Why? Because that light that is in you uh, is darkness. It's, it's similar to this, that you ever, uh, uh, I, I often watch kind of uh, uh, criminal movies, and I remember watching an episode of Criminal Minds, and this young boy, uh, his father had gotten killed and, in a gruesome way, and uh, he wanted to go and see uh, the body of his father uh, in that gruesome state. And the officer grabbed him and said, no, you don't want to see that. You don't want to see him as in that condition. Because if he were to look upon him and see him in that condition, it would traumatize him and would affect his life, which uh, is the light. Uh, an individual's light is their lifestyle, their life. And no doubt, that's where PTSD comes from, post-traumatic stress disorder, from trauma that people have seen with their eyes. It causes the images and, and the things that are seen affects one's life. So that's what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about if you're going to be uh, a part of the kingdom. You've got to focus and see things that are righteous. See things that are holy. Get rid of things that are corrupt. Get rid of things that are evil. Watch what you see. Watch what you allow to enter into your heart. That Watch what you allow to enter into your mind. If you are watching cowboys and Indians 24 hours a day, seven days a week, when, when situation happened to you because you have allowed that to come into your mind, that's how you're going to react. You're going to want to grab a gun and shoot somebody. You're going to want to fight them, beat them down. Huh? But if you expose yourself to truth, if you expose yourself to righteousness 24 hours a day, seven days a week, meditating on this word day and night. That kind of old shot. When you wake up in the morning, hallelujah, you'll think about Jesus. When you go to bed at night, hallelujah, you'll pray that the Lord will keep thy soul. And, and that's what's in your heart. Hallelujah, you manifest on a daily basis what is in your heart. Ah, thank you, Lord. To him that is evil, all things are evil, even that with his thoughts are corrupt. But to him that is righteous, all things are righteous, even his thoughts are righteous. That's what Jesus is saying here. Hallelujah, the light of the body. What you focus on affects your soul. Hey, Shabbat, hallelujah. So keep your focus on that which is right. Keep your focus on that which is holy, with that which is good, with that which is edifying to the soul and the body. Hallelujah. Don't be spending your time watching all my children and as the days, the days of our lives. Hallelujah. You ain't got to watch all that stuff looking at Mari Povich and all of those uh, uh, shows like that. Hey, hallelujah. Uh, 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 what did Paul say? Paul said, redeem the time. <laughs> hey, my God. All right, my God. All right, here we go. Note, verse uh, 26. No, verse 25. I'm sorry, my bad. Verse 24. He says, no man serves two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Uh, what Jesus is saying here is, 
uh, uh, do not love money. Love God more than you love money. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, money is not the root, but the love of it is the root. Uh, so he's saying, love God, don't love money. Amen? Uh, people spend their lives trying to make a whole lot of money. And, and in the process, they crush God. They crush people. All right? So notice, verse 25, he says, therefore, because he's still talking about money. That's why he says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, or, 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 or nor for the body, for what ye shall put on. See, all of those stuff that Jesus just named, you use money to buy. Because that's the reason why people stack money. Because, uh, I ain't gonna say totally that's the reason why, but uh, people are after money and stack money if they're greedy after it so that they can have stuff. Amen? So that, so that, so that they, they put that before anything else. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with saving money, putting money up. But I'm talking about the love of it. Thank you, Lord. So he's saying, don't, don't, don't be worried. Don't be worried uh, about it. Saints, uh, people in the kingdom of God are not allowed to be worried. <laughs> Notice what he says. He says, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, nor for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? But the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, do gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father, he does what? He feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? So he's saying here, you're much better than the birds, uh, and God takes care of them. Uh, they don't, they don't I, don't, I don't know what's in the mind of a bird, but they're not going to be redeemed. They're not going to be saved. Uh, and you, you're most precious. You're created in the image and the likeness of God. God is going to take care of you. God is going to supply your needs. <laughs> so you don't have to worry. Thank you, Lord. Worry uh, is not good. Notice what he says. He says, For which of you, uh, taking thought, can add one cubit to your stature? Uh, now, taking thought. Which of you can take one thought uh, and, 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 and multiply your height? You can't do that. <laughs> Notice what he said. Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like unto one of these. Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not, shall he not much more clothe ye? You, O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall I eat? What shall I drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? Now, Jesus is saying, don't worry about all of that. Amen? Uh, worry causes problems. God, you've got to have confidence in the ability and the power of God. Now, I'm about to close, but I want to say this. <clears throat> it's kingdom principle for the king to take care of his subjects. Uh, what king can be honestly a king if he's not providing for his subjects. Let me put it this way. What good father can say that he's a good father if he's not providing for his children? Uh, a good father and a good mother, they provide for their children. God is a good father. <laughs> Hallelujah. That provides. And, and, and when 
When people see you prosper, they are to glorify their fa your Father which is in heaven. How do you know that, that, that your Father is rich? Because he is blessing his children uh, uh, and helping them and supplying them their every need. Uh, a child growing up in a household should never have to worry about food, should never have to worry about clothing, should never have to worry about is the light bill going to be paid? If, is, is, is the gas bill going to be paid? Why? Because they got a daddy, they got a father that takes care of all those needs. <laughs> But what the father expects from the child is to have good behavior. Uh, and that's what God wants us to have. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. God expects us to have good behavior, to live right, <laughs> uh, to talk right. Am I right? To, to be right. Uh, that's the, if you think about a child growing up, a child, a father or a mother wants their children to be responsible, to have right behavior, to, to, to manifest good deeds, uh, to, to do good works. And that's what God wants us to do in his kingdom. He wants us to, to not try to go after that which is evil, that which is corrupt, but he wants us to seek first the kingdom. Seek first kingdom principles so that we can apply them to our daily life. Then that's righteousness. Then he says, if you do these things, all those other things that you are looking for shall be added unto you. And then Jesus says in the conclusion here, he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Just worry about today. Because today has its sufficiencies and tomorrow has its worries. So don't, don't be so consumed about what tomorrow may bring. Live for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. It will take care of itself. You have enough to worry about today. <laughs> That's what Jesus says. That's kingdom principle. Uh, we thank God that, that you have tuned in on today. Uh, be sure to send your tithes and your offerings uh, to Christian Ministries, 501 West 31st Street. But I thank God. I thank God for this word that has gone out on today. If we remember these, these eight areas in Matthew chapter number six, the area of giving, prayer, and fasting and deeds, those are four areas of worship that Jesus wants us to do in secret. And then the last four deals with our behavior, uh, our life, our worry, and what our priorities are, and money. Thank you, Lord. Principles of the kingdom. If we understand these things and put our focus, especially in this time, put our focus on the things that be of God and not on things of this earth, we'll have peace. We'll have joy. We'll have righteousness. Um, I'm coming to find out, even for myself, that, that we can take all the precautionary measures that we want. And it's good to take precautionary measures not to get infected uh, with that COVID-19 that's out there. But in essence, if you really think about it, now, now God doesn't want us to be foolish, and he wants us to do what's right. But it is God that keeps us. It is God that watches over us. 
It is God that blesses us. So I have to realize that I pray to God, God, you protect me, you shield me, you cover me, and you watch over me. Not only me, watch over the saints, watch over the people of God, watch over our families, watch over our children, watch over the world. We have to believe and trust God that he will not allow us to worry, not allow us to uh, uh, be afraid, but live out our lives in a responsible way according to kingdom principles. Brothers and sisters, let us trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lead to our own understanding, but continue to acknowledge God in all of our ways so that he can direct our path. Trust God. Let God lead you. Let God deliver you. Let God guide you. The enemy want to come up against you as a roaring lion, but Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah has already gained us the victory. Let us walk in that victory. Let us believe in our God. Let us trust in the Lord. Let us lean on him. Let us not lean to our own understanding. So brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, be encouraged as we move forward on this day. And I thank God that we'll finish up our Bible study next week if the Lord say the same, on Matthew chapter number 7, ah, dealing with kingdom salvation. I pray your strength, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless each and every soul under the sound of my voice. Let your glory be made manifest. Let your most perfect will be done. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Tune in with us. Also, on Sunday at 10 a.m. for our morning worship. We thank God for you. We praise God for you. May heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.